My name's Paul Jason and I'm the motorcycle broker. Here we have a 1972 MV Agusta 750 Sport that we sourced for a customer at their request. It's a very rare drum brake model. Now these were produced only with drum brakes, but MV later only produced the 750 Sport with the double disc on the front. And lots of people upgraded to the double disc from the drum, so there's very few left with the original drum brake front end. When you ride it, you understand why, and you also understand how incredible these racers were back in the day when they were racing these motorcycles. Although it's a four leading shoe, um, uh, twin sided drum brake on the front end, and it is very powerful, it's, it's, there's quite a delayed reaction on it before you start to brake, and they're a bit like an on-off switch. There's not a great deal of feel or in-between. So these riders, when they were racing them, really had to think ahead when they were using the, the brakes on these courses. They had to really plan what they were doing. Now, this particular example, we sourced and it was restored about late 90s or early 2000s by Hansen and Schneider. Hansen and Schneider were the German MV importer and their restorations are really of such a great quality. They understood these bikes inside and out. They'd been importing them since the 1970s and they also were experts in restoring these machines. But they, they also, as well, they worked very closely with um, Arturo Manni. They were very good friends with him. They worked on the racing side with him, MV. They knew these motorcycles really well. They understood the finishes, and they really were of stupendous quality, their restorations. However, this motorcycle hadn't run since 1991, 2000 or it, it, it had only covered a few hundred kilometers after its original restoration by those guys and it was then sold to a collector and since then it had been with the collector and we sourced it but there was still quite a lot of work that we had to do to this motorcycle to have it running correctly to get some correct finishes here and there and to deal with the carburetors which are an issue on these early models they're very different to the later 1974 model. They have separate float bowls. They have only ticklers to prime them. There's no choke, there's no accelerator pump. So those ticklers are critical to getting the cold engine started. And I'm gonna show you what we did to this motorcycle to bring it up to the spec and to get it riding the way it rides now, as it should be. At first glance, the motorcycle looked fantastic, ready for any dealer to sell. And if you bought this from any normal classic motorcycle source, they would have changed the oil, fired it straight up and sold you the bike. And any problems you had, what do you expect? It's a 50 year old motorcycle. However, at the motorcycle broker, we do things differently. There were some issues as well with the paint on the fuel tank. Again, most dealers wouldn't see a problem, but the finish, well, it, there was just too much orange peel and we weren't sure if there was something going on underneath the lacquer. Firstly, the carbs are removed and then you can see that there's clearly someone has painted the carburetors. All four of them have been painted, which is only going to cause problems. Everything is stripped and into their individual components and the carbs are bunged up and soda blasted very, very carefully. Everything is then cleaned thoroughly and carefully with compressed air and in a, an ultrasonic cleaner. The ticklers, which never worked properly, they were too short, they um, crumbled and we had to make new ones. Once this was done, we reinstalled the carburetors. And after that, we had to have them in and out about a dozen times to get the ticklers working. Valve clearances were done and adjusted. A compression test revealed that the compression was excellent on each cylinder. Battery box had to be removed and was really suffering, so we blasted it. 
Uh, we'd already perfectly matched the colour, so then that was sprayed correctly, ready to be reinstalled. We stripped the lacquer on the tank, and we had to do this a few times because it did seem to uh, create a lot more orange peel after it had gassed off. Anyway, we got to the root of the problem, and now the petrol tank is looking fine. As well as servicing the brakes and setting them up correctly, we had to make sure that there was no asbestos within the drums from uh, past brake shoes from the old days, uh, because the bikes being exported for Australia are never very strict about that type of thing. This one now is being shipped to its new owner in Australia and we're very proud to have done the work we did to it, although it did take a long time. But to get these things right, it does take time. You can't just do it in a rush. It does take a long time to get this, these, these machines right and to get them set up correctly and to ensure that everything is investment grade for our client, as it is with this motorcycle. All the components are correct. Um, it is pretty much as it left the factory in 1972. No, it's not original paint, but it's very much original finishes and the colors are beautifully matched. Everything is really accurate on this motorcycle. Um, so that's the 1972 drum brake MV Agusta 750 Sport. My name's Paul Jason and I'm the Motorcycle Broker. Changes.